I'm going to do a whole lot more examples of solving equations with fractions. And I've taken these questions from past grade nine exam papers. So these are kind of the questions you might well end up seeing in your exam. So one of the things I'm going to suggest you do here is you go get a pen and a piece of paper and you actually try and solve these alongside me. I'll pause a little bit in between each step for you to actually um, try it out for yourself. Okay, here's the first one. What will be the very first step you do? That's right, you're going to find the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 because you want to get rid of the fractions. And that lowest common multiple is easy to find. It's 6. What's your next step? You multiply each side of the equation by 6. And note, that means that this whole thing is multiplied by 6. So this gets multiplied by 6, and that gets multiplied by 6. And I'm actually going to write that in just to make it easier for myself. Okay, so I've written it in. This is multiplied by 6, and that's multiplied by 6, because the whole left-hand side was being multiplied by 6. So when I do this multiplication by 6, 2 cancels with 6, giving me a 3. And so what I have is 3x. And here, the 3 cancels with a 6, leaving a 2. And so I've got two lots of 2x plus 3. And the right-hand side is nice and easy. 1 times 6 is just 6. Now I have to multiply out. So I've got to say 2 times 2x, which gives me 4x. And then I have to say 2 times 3, which gives me 6. And now 3x plus 4x, that's 7x. And now I get 7x is 6 minus 6, which is 0. So x is equal to 0. And remember, if I'm a little worried that I might have done something wrong in between, I can always check my solution by taking that solution and substituting it into the left hand side of the original and being sure that I get the right hand side. So let's do that now. I'm going to make x 0, so it'll be 0 over 2 plus 2 times 0 plus 3 over 3. Well 0 over 2 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3, 3 over 3 is 1, and so this is 1, and that is what the right-hand side is, so we can rest assured that we have got this thing here correct. Okay, let's try another one. What's the first step here? Write it down. Yep, again, we want to get rid of those fractions, so we're going to find, yet again, the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3, and we already know that that is 6. What's our next step? write it down. Yep, it is to multiply each side, the whole side of the equation by 6. And of course we remember that this 6 has to multiply with each and every piece in this, so I'm actually going to write that in. Okay, let's deal with it now. Here the 3 will cancel with the 6, leaving a 2, so you've got two lots of 2x plus 1. Over here, you've got 5 times 6, and that is just 30. And then over here, your 2 will cancel with your 6, leaving a 3. So what you've got is 3x. And so now it's a plain old simple old equation to solve. Let's just multiply out here. We'll get 4x plus 2 is equal to 30 minus 3x. Now we need to get all the x's onto one side and all the x's and all the numbers onto the other. So to get rid of this 3x, we're going to add it to both sides. And to get rid of the 2, we're going to subtract it. And so what we get here is 7x is equal to 28. And now we need to divide both sides of the equation by 7 to get x is equal to 4 as our answer. Again, if we want to make sure we've got it right, we can always go and substitute 4 into this equation here. And we must make sure that what we get on the left is the same as what we get on the right. 
So let's go ahead and do that in this case, right? So let's start with the left hand side and substitute in 4. We'll get 2 times 4 plus 1 over 3. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. What happens on the right hand side? Here we've got 5 minus a half and our x we think is 4, right? 5 minus a half of 4 is 2 and then that is 3. And so we've got the left hand side and the, the left hand side is 3, the right hand side is 3, they're equal to each other and so we know we have got the correct answer because when we substitute 4 into this equation the left hand side does equal the right hand side. Okay, try this one. What's your first step? Okay, first step is always to find the lowest common multiple of those denominators so we can get rid of the fractions. And the lowest common multiple of 7 and 3 is 21. So then we're going to multiply this side of the equation by 21 and this side of the equation by 21. When we do that, well here the 7 will cancel with a 21, leaving a 3. So we've got 3 lots of 3x minus 2. And here the 3 cancels with a 21, gives me a 7, and I've got 7 lots of x minus 2. Just notice I'm very careful about keeping those brackets in, right? Because the 7 is going with everything in the x, you know, every the x and the minus 2. Similarly, this 3 has to go with the 3x and the minus 2. So just be careful about that. Keep the brackets in. And only in the next step do you multiply them out. So let's do that together. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times 2 is 6. 7 times x, 7x, and 7 times 2 is 14. Now we want to bring all the x's to this side, so we subtract 7x from both sides, and we want to get rid of that negative 6, so we add 6 to both sides, and we'll get 2x is equal to negative 14 plus 6 is going to get me to negative 8, and now we divide by 2 and we get x is equal to negative 4. Again, and I'm not going to do it, if I wanted to check just to make sure I have got the right answer, I can go and substitute that negative 4 in here and I can substitute the negative 4 in here and make sure that I get the same on the left and the right. And if I do, I know my answer is correct. Okay, here's a slightly strange example that did in fact appear in an exam paper. The reason that this is strange is because your variable y is sitting at the bottom of a fraction. So there's not a nice little number to find the lowest common multiple of two numbers, right? But what we know we want to do, the idea is we want to get rid of the fractions. So how do we get rid of the over 5? Well, in order to get rid of the over 5, we need to multiply through by 5. We also want to get rid of the over y. Well, how do we get rid of that? We must multiply by y. So if we multiply by 5, y, we'll get rid of both the 5 and the y. So that's what we're going to do. Multiply this side of the equation by 5y and this side of the equation by 5y. And as always, this multiplies with each and every piece. So I'm actually going to go ahead and write that in. So now I can do it, right? When I multiply this, the 5 will cancel with the 5 and I'll be left with a y. So I've got 3y. And over here, the y will cancel with the y and I'll be left with 2 times 5, which is 10. And here, I'm going to have 1 times 5y, which is 5y. Now remember, I want all my y's on one side and all the numbers on the other. So I'm going to say 3y minus 5y is equal to negative 10. This is negative 2y is equal to negative 10. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 2 and I will get that y 
is equal to 5. And as always, if I want to check if I'm correct, I can go and substitute this back into here and make sure I get out the answer of 1. If I do, then I know I've got it correct.